How many people do you think that she inspired on this day? How many little girls in that audience, or maybe even teenage girls, little boys, did she inspire globally on this stage in this exact moment? Hey, what's up? A.A. Hey, hey, Ron here for reaction number 49 with Angelina Jordan at the age of eight doing What a Wonderful World by Louis Armstrong at the Nobel Peace Prize concert. Now, obviously, that's a big deal just by its name, but I wasn't entirely sure of this concert. So I did look it up and just super briefly, we'll keep it brief, but um, it looks like it's it makes sense. I'm not familiar with it because it's in uh, Norway, Norway in Sweden, um, it looks like. And it's been held annually since 1994 on the 11th of December to honor the Nobel Peace Prize. So, you know, obviously it's huge. Um, it's broadcast to a global audience. It reaches up to 350 million households in 100 countries. I know I've seen it. Um, I don't recall specifics about it. I know it's huge. But look at that, 350 million households. Um, the fact that she's being chosen at the age of eight to be in that just, it, it, you need nothing more than to demonstrate uh, that to demonstrate just how incredible she is and how special, um, really, Angelina is. So that said, uh, we're we're looking at Louis Armstrong now. I did hear one recording of her in the studio doing this, where she was kind of listening to herself. And you definitely should watch that. It's adorable, but specifically the emotions she elicits in that are incredible. And I want to talk briefly on that, add on to what I had said before leading into this, and then we'll get to it, is, you know, ultimately, she's a very complex person, and most of the tunes that she sung to this point are minor keys. They're songs that are more dark and somber, but then you add this piece in major that is what a wonderful world that sounds so bright and beautiful, and it's about having a wonderful world, and then you see the animation of her on her face, like saying, and I thought to myself, what a wonderful world. And you could see she's actually experiencing it and feeling it and believing it. And so, you know, um, she's one of those people that absolutely is, you know, already has really, but is really going to change the world um, through her, her just her humanity. Um, and so she's very special. And that's what we're witnessing here. I'm super excited. So let's get into it. is dedicated to Malala and Kailash. I see trees of green Red for the zoo I see the blue For me and you And I think to myself What a wonder So, um, first and foremost, just her constant waving, and I saw a smile out of her. Um, she's so chirpy in that dress, and look at that audience. All eyes are on her, and she is just a shining star. Um, you know, I said before that I think she can have a, a stronger, a, you know, still early on, a stronger stage presence. Look, I know many of you disagree with me. In fact, I don't think anybody agreed with me then, and that's fine. Um, I still stand by that. I do. I mean, she's a performer. She's up on stage. All eyes are on her. Um, I'm not saying that she should or could have at this age, right? I'm just talking about where does it go from here? Um, I think she absolutely can have a stronger stage presence. But, you know, what she's doing here is nobody else can do. I mean, that's just, I mean, factual, right? Who else can do that at this age? Um, let's talk a little bit about her interpretation of this. So um, I don't think it's in the original key. Sorry, my, my pitch monitor um, app is causing issues when I record this. Maybe I'll go back and look at it separately, but um, I don't have perfect pitch, so I have, I have relative, and so I don't believe, though, it's in this the, the same key that um, Louis Armstrong does. It does have a little bit of a different feel from that perspective. Secondly, 
you know, he has this deep, almost growl. They say, I love you. I hear babies. Um, and she's got a much brighter tone, um, you know, up an octave at least from where he's singing it. Um, and she sounds like a developed little girl here. Um, I hear some of the, you know, the vibrato and so forth from some of her influences. Um, I loved her interpretation of where she said, I think to myself, um, which I believe is, is the same note as when you go up to the top of it, except interpreting down. And, um, you know, at points when Louis sings it, he kind of like hums and does these little things and sometimes speaks lower. So I'm wondering if she's actually matching the pitch from some of those hums. I don't think I've heard the melody go down. So that's a nice, cute interpretation. Um, and it fits. It works for sure. Um, and, it, and it almost flows seamlessly to keep it moving. I feel like it's actually less abrupt than the original from that perspective in terms of melodic progression and, you know, with the chord progression. I like it. Um, she sounds good. Her pitch is on. Um, I mean, still we don't see, you know, perfect vibrato and some inconsistencies there. Um, and, and, uh, you know, there, there are a couple places where I feel like she wasn't 100% on pitch, but her rhythm's perfect and, and, uh, you know, her tone sounds good. Um, I don't think that she's, has perfection yet, um, where she's progressing through the registers. Um, but it's just unbelievable what she's doing at this age, guys. I mean, please, again, I've said this numerous times if you've been following me, but it's so important to say, you know, don't misconstrue my nitpicking of some of these minor things, and that's all they are is minor, at an early age with, you know, me wanting to show or prove something about myself or that I don't understand or respect or, um, you know, admire what she's doing and who she is. That is the furthest from the truth. In fact, I think it's probably the reason that I'm nitpicking because, again, it shows the development and progression. I think that's key. Um, that said, let's get back to it. The color rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also other faces. Just a imperfect vibrato there, uh, in, in pitch as well, a little bit imperfect. Yeah. Ooh, nice. channeled her deep dark side of it I think to myself they're gonna have to go back far enough yes I think to myself oh, that's nice that was nice See, now there's a very sophisticated vibrato at the end there. Not perfect, but it's going by the slightly larger range. And the timing of that vibrato, too, slows down as the music's slowing down. Okay, so there's a couple things I want to comment on here. Um, she has all these connected fluid phrases, which we've seen a couple times before. Um, she said the color of the rainbow, like all one word. I'm not going to go back to it, but it was like there was, she didn't even say color. 
Um, I definitely would like a little better diction there. Uh, but her phrase is like, she said, I love you. I heard that, like, it was all one phrase there as well. Um, yeah, I don't know what I, what it was about that, but, uh, it's right around the section where we need to go to anyway because I want to talk about something else. Yeah, all this waves. Right there, it's all connected. So pretty in the sky. Color the rainbow. Are also other faces of people going by. I see face shaking head. Yeah, here, here I want to talk about this. So this is partially an audio engineering problem, right? Certainly as much as it is her. They should have tested this. They should have been able to handle this. Um, you know, and, and so you hear a little bit of a popping because it reaches the peak amplitude of the input. Now, a more experienced singer, and you can see she's still developing her mic techniques, would, would, would put the, the, um, mic further away from their mouth or maybe a little bit off to the side. Here she's still right into it as she's belting. And you hear it actually popping, um, a little bit of that. And it sounds really bad for a minute if you pay attention to the audio. So again, it's not just her. Um, her singing sounds good. Let's be clear on that. Um, it's just a combination of the audio engineering didn't set her up well enough to limit or, you know, filter those out, maybe have a better filter on it or something to that effect. Um, combined with, you know, she's still obviously at the age of eight, come on again, still developing her mic technique, right? When they switch the camera angles, that's when she starts belting. Or that's when she's belting. Here it comes, right here. Here. Yeah, it's just a little bit. And there a little bit too. Okay, I don't want to keep this longer than it is. Um, She's just an inspiration. I don't know how else to say it. To be up there, that eight-year-old, I mean, how many people do you think that she inspired on this day? How many little girls in that audience, or maybe even teenage girls, little boys, did she inspire globally on this stage in this exact moment? We know she's inspired millions since then, but on this exact moment, how many did she inspire? And that's just very in line and in tune with the nature of the song. What a wonderful world. She could not have done a better song, chosen a better song for that. And that right there shows brilliancy and, and, and um, you know, just maturity, which I'm sure, you know, her mother and grandmother probably had something to do with, um, you know, but nevertheless, I'm sure she was the real architect and brain behind it. She might have asked them saying, hey, what do you think? But I'm sure it was her decision. Um, Amazing, amazing. I, you know, minor critiques, but this is, this is amazing. I'm so glad I did it. Um, that said, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and do so now. We will see you in the next video.